we should be telling our story. There's no reason why we can't stand up and tell what's going on and how what people are, are, are experiencing because it's new. We need to learn. That's the whole point. As a nurse, it is my job to inform. It is my job to educate and to take care and be respectful. And I will always do that no matter what I'm doing. What's up, guys? Welcome back to We Will's From the Front Line series, a show that is an honest, unedited dialogue from your neighbors here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're sharing a speech from Nancy Hill, a local nurse that was given at a countywide coalition meeting of nurses, teachers, firefighters, local representatives, and law enforcement. The purpose of this meeting was to help these folks join our forces and educate the community about what we can do to help them. If you're interested in learning more about what's going on or seeing more of these types of videos, please consider signing up to our email list over at wewillwelcome.com or following us on Facebook or subscribing to our YouTube channel. So, so we're going to hear from a nurse next, one that is uh, making some really brave choices right now. Her name is Miss Nancy Hill. Hey everybody, thank you so much all for being here. I am so incredibly grateful to be able to be here with you guys, not only for that, but for this opportunity, which some people don't wanna have hardships in their life, but with every challenge, there's always an opportunity to rise above and to trust in the Lord and know that he will carry us through this, because he will. So first I'll give you a little background of, of hi. Oh. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay, so I'll give you a little background. Um, I've been a nurse uh, for 16 years, just about, and I've started at Peace Health back in 2007, um, specializing in cardiac. Um, I've always done a good job. I've always, I've never been in trouble for anything in, re in regards to like patient care or any, I've always done a good job as far as being a nurse. I've always stood my ground, stood up for what's right, and also stood up for my patients' rights, first, like, always. There's been plenty of times when you know, the doctors will write orders that will conflict with what they wish, and it's our job to stand up and say, no, that, that's not going to happen. A lot of times they'll use intimidation, but we, we will not be intimidated. We will not be shaken. So fast forward, you know, several years, H1N1 comes out. I was one of the first to get vaccinated. I was pregnant with my third child, and they pulled that after there were less than 25 deaths, I believe. And uh, which makes you wonder, there's a lot more with this new vaccine and they're not pulling it and they're hiding a lot of information. But that's another issue. So last fall, they mandated the uh, flu vaccine, which I told them I was going to be asserting my religious exemption, not asking permission, but asserting. So they told me I couldn't do that. And I said, yes, yes, I can. And I will. So I did. I submitted it with the help of the union, WSNA union, and I got exempt within 30 minutes. But they lied. They lied to the people, the, to all the employees, telling them that they have to get it. And so in my letter, I said, I will not allow any kind of an injection. I, I disagree with it for this one and any other future ones as well. But, and I knew that they were just gearing up for the COVID you know, vaccine to make it mandatory, which is completely unconstitutional, unethical, violates so many medical privacies and medical freedoms. And along with the Nuremberg Code, which is not being taught, in the schools, which is a complete disgrace. That's another topic. So back to the, to the, this, uh, the mandate about the COVID vaccine, they announced April, uh, August 1st, the beginning of August, that we had until the end of this month to comply and, or else we will be put on a leave of absence or be terminated. Um, so people were really worried submitting religious exemptions. I submitted mine right away, right when I found that out. And I was told that um, I will th thank you for the, the submission and we will let you know the next steps. I have heard nothing, nothing at all. But I have been informed through other people that I will not be allowed to be on Peace Health property 31st. It's kind of going in and out. So not only me, but many other employees. So many people are worried because this is their livelihood. This is how they're supporting their families. And now they're being forced to put an experimental vaccine, which has crazy side effects that we're seeing firsthand. And so many people are completely not even acknowledging or talking about, and that's dangerous. We should be telling our story. There's no reason why we can't stand up and tell what's going on and how, what people are, are, are experiencing 
because it's new. We need to learn. That's the whole point. As a nurse, it is my job to inform. It is my job to educate and to take care and be respectful. And I will always do that no matter what I'm doing. So fast forward. Thank you. So this letter has been sent out to several people nationwide, and it has helped many people in their jobs. But Inslee is trying to really put the hammer down, and he really is just acting like a spoiled little child that needs to be disciplined. Because that's what's happened in our country. We've lost the respect. The di Can you hear me now? <laughs> We've lost the respect and discipline. People aren't doing what they should be doing. Why? Because they've trusted the government to educate their children. What is the government doing? They're going to mask our children and try and force these, these uh, vaccinations that are experimental. No, and indoctrinate our children. But the previous speaker said she's absolutely right. They are indoctrinating our children, and we have to take a stand. We have to. If we don't, we lose everything. And I'm not going to lose things. Absolutely not. So I have five children, technically six. One's up in heaven. So I've got five children here that I, that I homeschool. I used to always be against homeschooling when I was younger until something happened. And it's amazing how God will provide a challenge, but also provides an opportunity. So it's amazing how quickly I became a homeschool mom. And even now I get overwhelmed because I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got five children I'm homeschooling. You know, what do I do? But it's, it's, a, it's a process. I took the chance and I took the leap and God has provided, and he will always provide. So my kids are 15, 13, 12, 10, and 8. So we are, we're in a co-op right now, and it's been wonderful. It's been difficult. It's not easy. But guess what? We can do it. It can be done. There are so many people out there that want to help, that want to take part in this, that want to teach the truth to the children, because they're the future. And if we don't treat that well, if we don't, if we don't teach them the truth, then we lose it. We lose it all. We are the majority because when we start speaking truths to people and planting seeds, guess what? God's going to water them. Don't worry about trying to change their mind or if we lose little court battles here and there. Those are little battles, but the war we have won because God is on our side. But that also means that we have the responsibility of standing standing up and taking a stand, saying what's right and wrong, and saying, no, I am not going to mask my children. No, I will buy this stuff, and I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to let you inject my body with something that's experimental. Even if you lose your job, which I don't, I, I, I had my last day a couple days ago, and I walked out, took, 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 took a picture and posted it, and I want to encourage people, don't be afraid. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity, and God will carry us through this. I did get blessed with another job. It's temporary, and that's fine. I know God's going to provide, and that's okay. I mean, the challenges that come with that as a single mother and also caring for my two parents that live with us. My kids help me, but we rally together. We live in a tiny house, 1,400 square feet, and I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the blessings that God has given me and the opportunities because it's a chance. It's a chance to be stronger, and it's a chance to rise above and to, and to rally with other good people that want the truth and need to hear the truth. And we can tell our story to people, talk about what's really going on, and not be afraid, not be silenced, not having a face diaper over our, our mouth that doesn't do anything, especially when we put our kids in school. It, it is so demoralizing to them. It affects them socially, psychologically, mentally, and that's where they're supposed to learn. No, we can do better, and we must do better. And I, I get it. People will, you know, are going to have a hard time with their different circumstances. I understand that, but I'm telling you, as a single mom raising five children and homeschooling and caring for my two elderly parents, you guys can do it. God will provide, and he will not forsake you.